Hello, everyone. Happy Tuesday. I think it would be a good idea if we started with a quick tech check. If you can hear us, please let us know. We can hear you. That is a good sign. Okay. <laughs> Marvelous. All right, Mr. and Stitches, you can take us to the craft table. I've got my bag ready to go. Hook is where I left it yesterday. My stitch marker is where I left it yesterday. Welcome to part two of our live crochet along for our shell stitch market bag. Yesterday, I managed to get to the end of row seven, so I'll be working on uh, continuing with my half double crochet stitch in the round today. Once again, we'll have the video tutorial that we are uh, using, our original video tutorial for the Shell Stitch Market Bag, link down below. So if you want to zoom ahead or back up and catch up, uh, that will be there for you. But today I'm gonna continue on where we left off. I've got my two strands of cotton, size four medium weight yarn going. I'm definitely gonna have enough of this purple, which is sort of my consistent color throughout. And I'm using up the rest of this holiday yarn, this, um, uh, Christmassy colored red, white, and green stuff. It will definitely run out before the bag finishes, but I've got another ball of Christmas stuff, this uh, slightly tinsely thing that I'm going to tie in. And I'm hoping to make a bag that doesn't look very Christmassy, but is kind of a neat way to use up that Christmas yarn, kind of a little experiment. Um, so off I go. I'm still working the half double crochet stitch. I'm using my stitch marker to make note of where the first stitch in my row is so that I don't lose track and I don't have to count quite as accurately. And I like to get two stitches into the row. And then I put my stitch marker back. And welcome! Glad you're all here again. And those of you who are able to make it for the first time this week, welcome. Those of you who are back, welcome back. <laughs> uh, several of you mentioned that you zoomed ahead and finished a bag yesterday. So that's wonderful. I don't think you can have too many of these shell stitch market bags. Mr. and Stitches is in the chat, so if you uh, want to chat with Mr. and Stitches, he's there in the live stream chat. He is still down the well. We are um, still not both in, hello, in the same everybody. room, hello. <laughs> but uh, you can definitely hear him. <laughs> and uh, I'm just going to keep on where I left off. So I am in row eight of the pattern. At this point, it's still half double crochet but there is no increasing or decreasing. I'm just working on the bottom part of the bag. I see everybody discussing the weather. Good to see. It's been a very uh, mixed bag this morning. It was sunny, now it's overcast. We might get some rain. Oh, Georgie, Georgie, a membership milestone. Mr. will get 100% in names today, yes. <laughs> Is the spelling wasn't terrible the last couple of days. I'm not that bad. <laughs> I think we could use a little rain where we are. That'd be nice. I'd like to see the, the, the grass could use a bit of a drink. Um, some of the flowers are just getting started, so they could always use a little drink. And I'm taking it easy today. I'm not crocheting super fast. Uh, I'm not worrying about my tension either. This is a bag. It's not doesn't have to be stiff. Um, but uh, I don't want to stress out my joints, my wrists or my my thumbs or anything. So um, when you're working with two strands held together or any number of strands held together, uh, it is a bit of a strain. So you want to make sure that maybe you just slow down a little bit and don't uh, don't try to work too speedily. I find that that is the that's what can lead to uh, um, it's the word I want, fatigue. Yes, yes, it can lead to fatigue rather quickly. So I'm taking it easy today. Um, I think we should have a, oh my gosh, what did I just miss? Nico, Nico, hello, Nico. Thank you for gifting a membership. <laughs> Looks like Jane has won it. Thank you very much, Nico. We appreciate the support. We will uh, have, we've actually got, have made a few posts to members already today and uh, a general post to everybody. So if you're new to our channel, make sure you check out the community tab on our channel homepage because we post all sorts of fun stuff there. We also posted a very useful poll today. Um, we were wondering 
and you can go and check out the poll a little later and please feel free to vote. You can still vote in it. Um, when you're watching YouTube, what information do you use to ascertain whether or not you're watching a pre-recorded video or an archived live stream? So an archived live stream is a live stream that's already happened. It's not live anymore, but it's available for replay. Um, and the reason we asked that is because we've had a lot of questions and comments um, recently that suggest to us that some people don't really um, see or understand the difference between a pre-recorded video and an archived live stream. Uh, because our videos and our live streams are quite different in the way they're structured and, and the kinds of things we do on them, how they look, um, all that. So we were just kind of looking to see how people kind of consume their, their video information, because there's a lot of different ways you can get information out of a video, whether it's the title or the thumbnail, which is the photograph that sort of precedes the video. Maybe it's the information beneath the video. Maybe it's in the description box, the comments. So we were just wondering. And I have to say the feedback's been pretty interesting. And we're going to share it with YouTube because we want them to know um, what everybody sees. Uh, Von Toria says, aren't they time and date stamped? Yes. So videos have a date below them that says published on or published so many, you know, years ago or something. And a live stream will say streamed on or streamed so many hours or days ago. Um, but that information sits below the video player. And I'm not sure that everybody can see it depending on the device they're using. So for example, if you watch YouTube on a uh, television, that information may not be as readily visible. Um, so it's uh, it's kind of helpful to know, you know, what is it that you look at first? I typically read um, titles, but uh, I also kind of look below the the video to see if there's, you know, information on the video itself. I'm just finishing row eight. That's the last stitch of row eight. And I have two more rows of just straight Half double crochet to go. So, so far, so good. I'm going to remove my stitch marker. This is stitch one of row nine. I'm going to get a couple stitches in. I'm going to put my stitch marker back so I know I've done an entire row when I get back to it. There we go. And off I go again. And today I can actually kind of see what's going on in the chat. So that's sort of nice. Has anyone tried rug hooking? Asks Sherry. Yes, I have. I usually got into rug hooking quite a bit when I was younger. I really liked that. I still have my latch hooks around somewhere. Hello, hello. Welcome, everyone. If you're just joining us, um, this is part two of our shell stitch market bag crochet along on our live streams. We have a tutorial for the entire project. So if you want to skip ahead or um, see what you may have missed or just, you know, see the whole project in a much more concise way, that tutorial will be linked in the description box after this live stream has concluded. If it isn't already, I'm not sure if Mr. and Stitches may have included that or not. Dawn says she's still working on the basket. You know, I'm always working on a basket. <laughs> I'm really glad I made that, that extra one. So now I've got something to cart my um, Fair Isle style calendar blanket work in progress around in. Uh, but I'll be definitely making more baskets before the end of the year. I just use them constantly. Trying very hard not to strain my wrists. The hook I'm using has a very deep uh, hook part. So the actual hook is kind of deep and very sharp. Not sharp in a pointy kind of way, but just um, like, for example, this one is kind of rounded. I don't know if you can see the difference between those two hooks. So this one is kind of rounded. It's not the hook part isn't as deep. This one is a lot less rounded and it's got a much deeper um, hook to it. So it makes it nice for handling multiple strands because I can hook more of the yarn or more strands together with this hook. But the sharp kind of um, the, the very defined edge sometimes makes me want to split the yarn I'm using. Wraith ran out of yarn last night. <laughs> it started the small size. Well, that's cool, too. You were going along. You must you must have been going pretty quickly.
I'm eager to have another market bag. I uh, I find I use these quite a bit, but I also just like to use them as a purse. I find they're they're really pretty, and they're I don't mind. You know, I can I can sort of they look really cute with a pair of jeans. Like they kind they make a very casual outfit look. You know, just a little less casual, I guess, <laughs> or or maybe a little less plain. They still kind of look casual, but a little less plain. Ah uh, yes, the stitch markers are really helpful, Don. I I usually count, but when I'm chit chatting with everybody in a live stream, I kind of need to keep. Uh, I need that stitch marker to mark the first stitch of my row. That way, I don't have to count, or get more likely lose count as I'm uh, crocheting and kind of chit chatting with everybody. Um, so I find that stitch marker really helps. Um, the CC, you can turn on closed caption, uh, Maritza, by just, if you mouse over the, or or tap on your video player, the closed caption button should be there. Sometimes you have to turn it on. It's not always just automatically on for everything. And I'm not actually sure how closed captioning works during a live stream. I know that it, uh, it comes, it, I know it works after the fact, but I'm not sure how accurate it is during a live stream. YouTube is trying, is working on getting it like like um in real time but it might take it might not be ready yet so it'll it'll be available like on the archive yeah yeah this the closed caption will be available once the the stream is finished for sure but i'm not sure that that closed captioning is available in real time for a live stream everywhere i have seen it on some but i don't think it's necessarily available everywhere yet we're in canada we don't always get everything rolled out the same time that say people in the US do. So uh, that may have something to do with it. And I am just finishing row nine, I'm going to quickly count my rows just to make sure that I am finished row nine, and I'm not actually done one more or one less than I thought. Nice and easy here. Okay, that's the last stitch of what I believe is row nine. Let's take a look. Let's just flub that last stitch. There we go. Okay, so the very bottom of my bag, that was my foundation chain row right in the middle of those two stitch sets that are facing each other. So I know that's row one. So row one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, I've just finished row ten. It's a good thing I counted. Let me double check that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I have just finished row ten. Wow, it's a good thing I counted. Okay, row ten means I'm done the bottom of the bag. That's it for the half double crochet. And now I can start into the shell stitch, which is the best part of this whole bag project. So I'm going to take out my stitch marker. I'm going to slip stitch into the next stitch that closes off row ten. So row ten is now complete. The half double crochet base of the bag done. Now I start the shell stitch, uh, and it's an inline shell stitch pattern that we're using as opposed to the staggered shell stitch, which you typically think of when you see a granny square. I'm going to chain three. The chain three at the beginning of a row counts as a double crochet. I'm going to work two more double crochet into the same stitch that I slip stitched into. So this first shell is in the same stitch as the end of my row 10. There's my little shell. So three double crochet, the chain three counts. I skip two stitches, bink, bink, and then work three double crochet or a shell into the next stitch and so on all the way around. So skip two stitches, three double crochet into the next stitch. Skip two stitches, three double crochet into the next stitch. And that is the establishing row for my shell stitch. Ah, I love the shell stitch. It's just so easy. Skip two, three double crochet. So that came up a little quicker than I expected. Now I don't really need to use my stitch marker anymore, but if you were, the, if you did find that it's, you get kind of lost as we go through successive rows of the shell stitch, then you can bring your stitch marker back in and just clip the top of that chain three uh, that starts the row, just so you know you're there when you get back to it. Also, so you don't get confused by the um, 
false stitch. The false stitch is something that sits at the bottom of your chain three. You don't always use it in a crochet pattern. Um, sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. We don't really need it for this, the purpose of this pattern. So we, we don't want to, uh, to get confused by it. We have a question from Sonia. How many foundation stitches did you start with? Sonia asks, how many foundation chains did we start with? So this is the um, this is the original shell stitch market bag pattern that we're doing based on the tutorial that we did. I started with 24 chains and I did a half double crochet circular base. So 24 chains to start. And then you half double crochet three times into the second chain from the hook, half double crochet in every chain across, three half double crochet into the last chain, turn around, you're working along the underside of that foundation chain row, and then you half double crochet all the way back to the beginning. You don't join your rows when you're half double crocheting, you just work the next rows into the original, uh, the, what was the first stitch of the previous row. Um, all that is explained in the tutorial, it's also explained in yesterday's live stream. Um, for a smaller bag, goodness gracious. <laughs> Leora, thank you for picking up a pattern in our Etsy shop. Leora. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you try to figure out how to spell that. All right, I'm going to guess. Leora. <laughs> Leora. Oh what a pretty name. Um, you can make the 24 foundation chain bag, which is this one, which works out to be about 15 inches wide. Or you can go a little smaller and start with, um, what did I say yesterday? 20. 18 chains or 21 chains, 21 chains. Um, you can also go a little larger and start with 30 chains. So you, this is sort of a medium size in my opinion, but you don't want to go too big because then it gets to be too heavy. Um, and it's a market bag, so you don't really need it to be too small either. So those are, uh, those are just some suggestions to change the size if you wanted to. And uh, Leora picked up a pattern in our Etsy shop. Thank you, Leora. Just a, a quick reminder, if you wanted a copy of the pattern for your personal collection, um, our market bag patterns are on sale in our Etsy shop this week. They're 15% off. And a gigantic thank you to everybody who's picked up a copy. It's, uh, it's not necessary, but it's awfully appreciated. It really does help us out a lot here. It's one of the best ways to help the show. Um, or if you're Nico, <laughs> Nico likes to gift memberships. Um, that also really helps us out too. Being a member is, is very helpful here on the channel. And we uh, we do some fun stuff with our channel members. In addition to having badges and access to the emojis and just goofing around in the chat. I really like it when everybody's in there chit-chatting with each other. Oh, Leora, we got your name right. Boom! Named after her grandmother. Love yeah. it. I love classy names. Classical names. Those are so pretty. Hi, Doris. I'm so glad to know you're making the uh, the Fair Isle blanket along with us. I'm having so much fun with that project this year. I mean, I love our calendar blankets. It's one of my favorite things we do every year with everyone. But uh, I am really enjoying this year. We had been wanting to do graph work for a long time. And we were trying to figure out a way that we could do it that wouldn't like equal, you know, three hour long uh, tutorials because, you know, getting into the weeds of graph work. Oh, goodness. Hey. <laughs> can take a lot. Carlene. Thank you, Carlene. Graph work can be uh, can be kind of tedious, especially when you're looking at it from every single like the point of view of every single stitch. So we were really excited to be able to come up with a, a way to do that this year that didn't take, you know, forever uh, in a tutorial. And I'm trying not to split my yarn here as I go. I'm really liking how this color work is working out. I'm surprised that holiday yarn and the purple yarn looks pretty neat, I think, together. Joanne is still working on the big, beautiful basket and a C2C blanket. Ah, oh, another blanket pattern I like. Corner to corner is so much fun. Oops, come here, you. is looking nice okay skip two three double crochet into the next stitch nice plain shell stitch pattern 
I have a couple other size seven hooks here. So I thought, um, depending on the stitch pattern that I'm working, um, a hook can really make the difference of how quickly and how smoothly you can crochet. So for example, while I was doing the half double crochet stitch, my deep hook here uh, was great. I zipped along, no problem. But now that I've, I've switched to the double crochet stitch, I'm finding myself catching the extra strand quite a bit. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Someone has just purchased another pattern at our shop. Thank you. I can't see the name because they use uh, they they use the Apple the Apple Pay system. So uh, that that says uh, sign in with Apple Pay has just purchased a pattern. So whoever that was, thank you so much. And I'm coming around the corner of what is row 11. So the first row of the shell stitch pattern in my shell stitch market tote bag. Candy's making the summer cover up. Oh, I love that pattern too. I got to get mine out and give it a little wash and refresh it so I can start wearing it. The nice weather's coming soon. A stitch in time saves nine. I'm really trying to be smooth and even with my crocheting here so that I don't catch the yarn. Sometimes it's just about being a little less, like I was saying earlier, you don't want to, my, my tendency is to want to speed up. I always want to speed up. I want to just zip, not that I want to get to the end of a project. It's just that I, I think I enjoy crocheting so much that I get excited and I start, you know, speeding along. Well, if I go too quickly when I'm trying to wrangle these two sort of strain, strands of yarn, I end up dropping, uh, a, like I, I will I will miss catching it with my hook. Sometimes I'll split it just because I'm, I'm, I'm not taking that extra little bit of time to just turn the hook a little bit extra just to make sure that I've completely captured the yarn and then captured the actual loop. This is coming along nicely. Skip to one more, and I'll show you what that false stitch concept looks like here in a second. I am rapidly finishing off this ball of holiday yarn, so I will, I will be tying in a new ball shortly. All right, here we go. There are my two actual stitches. You can see them. I'm just going to pull out my hook, and I'll highlight them. So there's stitch number one. Here's stitch number two. And then next to that is what looks like another complete stitch. So this is what we often refer to as the false stitch. It sits right at the base of the chain three, uh, to the right if you're right-handed, to the left if you're working left-handed. And you get the false stitch whenever you're working around and around and around, and you're joining with a slip hey! stitch. <laughs> Patty, thank you, Patty. Patty has just picked up a pattern in our Etsy shop. Thank you so much, Patty. So this, this little guy here, this false stitch that sits at the bottom of the chain three, we don't need it. We don't need to pay attention to it. We're just ignoring it for the sake of this pattern. So I take out my stitch marker. I'm joining with a slip stitch to the top of the chain three. That closes off a shell stitch row. So now we're joining our rows with a slip stitch. And then you want to slip stitch into the next stitch. So whenever you finish off a row of slip stitch, or I should say a row of shell stitch, join with a slip stitch to the top of the chain three, and then immediately slip stitch into the very next stitch, which will always be the middle stitch of a shell. So it's always going to be the middle stitch of a shell. That's where you start your row, because this is the inline shell stitch. And the inline shell stitch means that all of the shells sit directly on top of each other. So the middle of a shell is always rooted in the middle of a shell from the previous row. So the bottom of a shell always sits in the, the very middle of the shell from the row previous. So keep that in mind. Unlike the staggered shell stitch, which is where you usually work the shell stitch into the actual space, um, you, can, you can do that in this pattern, but it's a little easier if you um, reverse rows. Like, I mean, like you, you reverse directions every row, but I kind of like that that inline shell stitch. It's nice for a change because I feel like I use the staggered shell stitch a lot in projects. So there we go. And now I'm looking for the middle stitch of the next shell. 
Martha! Thank you, Martha. Where is the best place to get kits for rug hooking? I want to try. The Michaels near me in Canada doesn't carry any, says Sherry. Okay. Um, I'm going to say check out Mar Mar um, uh, Mary Maxim's website, Sherry, because uh, they're Canadian. So you can you can certainly get something shipped from um, in from where they are in Canada. But of course, they also have a distribution center in the States. So if anybody um, in the U.S. is looking to buy from Mary Maxim, they also ship within the U.S. too. How about Lens Mill? At Lens Mill might have some rug hooking kits. I don't know, but I know that Mary Maxim typically carries them. Um, and they're kind of the, the classic all needlework hobbies store that springs to mind, especially here in Canada. Um, so I would check them out. And if you've never done rug hooking before, I recommend that you start with something really small like a, like a pillow sized little rug, rug hooking project. You can finish off the back and you can, you can hang it up like a little wall hanging if you don't know what else to do with it. But um, it can be, if you're new to rug hooking, it can be kind of like, it can, I'm not saying it is, but it can feel a little bit tedious and a little bit overwhelming because you're hooking, um, you're hooking a, a strand of yarn into every single one of those little squares. Um, think of graph paper. So it can feel like an awful lot of work. And if you don't really like it, then you don't want to spend the money on a really big project. So I recommend getting a small one to start with. Catherine asks, do we have hobby craft in Canada? I have never heard of hobby craft. Um, so maybe certainly not anywhere in the parts of Canada that I've been to. Um, our big, our big, the, the, the craft stores that I'm familiar with in Canada are Michael's. We have Michael's, although I understand it's not nearly as spectacular as the Michael's that are in the United States. Um, we have Lens Mills in Ontario, and there's a few of those, uh, outlet stores. We have Mary Maxim, which is largely, uh, an online ordering kind of, um, system. Uh, we used to have White Rose, which had a lovely craft section to it. And we used to have, um, oh, what was that one at the mall, guys? It was, uh, what was, oh, what was it? What was that? What was that? What was that place at the mall, honey? The, the craft store that was in all the malls back in the 80s and 90s. Do you remember that? What was the craft store in the mall? Um, it had like, you know, you could go in there and get all your. Uh, the craft store in the mall. Yeah, remember the, the craft store, the, the, the chain of craft stores in the malls? It was called um, Lewis Craft. Lewis Craft. Oh, I don't even remember. You don't remember that? Oh, I used to love going in there. They had like Fimo and I don't know, I was a kid at the time. So I was usually going in looking for GIMP um, to make bracelets and stuff. Yes, Lewis Craft. <laughs> So now you can really see that inline shell stitch. I'm working three double crochet into the middle stitch of the shell from the row previous. And all of the shells stack up directly on top of each other, which is why it's called the inline shell stitch. And I like it. I like that visual effect, especially in this bag format. I am working on, this is row 12. Trying not to split my yarn, but I keep doing it. Oops, did I do three? Nope. One, two, three, three double crochet all into the same stitch. It's still skip two stitches, work three double crochet into the next stitch. So if you find it's easier to look at that visual cue, then it's still the same thing. Skip, skip three, skip two stitches, three double crochet into the next stitch. Um, but if it's, you know, if you're kind of looking at it like I am, I like to sort of look at the next shell. Here's the next shell, find the middle stitch and then work a shell into that. I just find that a little easier um, to visually identify as I'm zipping along. We don't have Hobby Lobby in Canada. We don't have Joann's in Canada. Um, or, Hobby or Hobby Craft. We don't have uh, I, I, Hirschner's. We don't have... Um, uh, well, Hirschner's is pretty, like, 
they'll, they'll ship here. Like, they're pretty... Uh, Kirshner's will ship here, but we don't have any, like... We don't have any, like, stores, like, no, physical stores. No. Nope, no Hobby Lobby in Canada. Um, Canada doesn't usually get much in the way of chain stores. Um, we, like, they try every once in a while. Like, Target tried for five seconds and then decided, nah, <laughs> and took it out. Um, and we might be getting we might be getting Zellers back. Did you guys see that Zellers might be coming back? They're it, thinking about it is it back already? Yeah. Um, Zellers, I used to love the yarn section at our local Zellers. So when they had Zellers, so I hope if they if they do bring back a Zellers, they bring it back in the way that it was before, because that was of all the, the little craft department areas in a department store like a Walmart or a Zellers or whatever those that was the best yarn uh, selection in my opinion uh, Walmart's yarn selections usually aren't very good hey Trina welcome everybody who's just getting here I am uh, working along row 12 of my shell stitch market bag um, I am just about out of this this Christmas yarn, uh, so I'll be tying in another ball. So that's kind of fun. The bottom of this bag will be will look different than um, the rest of the bag, but I kind of like that. We're sort of sort of mixing up the happy scrappy market bag uh, yarn work, colored work com concept, along with the shell stitch market tote bag pattern. So I just love tweaking patterns. I love I love to make a pattern. I like to make things multiple times, but I usually don't make them identical. I like to sort of change things a little bit every time I do them. Keeps me keeps me from getting bored. Okay, that is the last shell of row 12. Same thing. I want to jump across to the top of the chain three and join. So you do join your shell stitch rows. You Can don't. get a nice close-up pan of your uh, beautiful work? Sure. Mr. and Stitches wants a close-up. Let's do that. So there's the shell stitch. Inline shell stitch. Really enjoying how this color work is working out. There's my little spaces in between. So that's two rows in of shell stitch. I've got, so that's row 11 and row 12. And I'm going to repeat the shell stitch row until row 20. So I've got eight more rows or so of the shell stitch to go. Whenever you finish a row of shell stitch, join with a slip stitch to the top of the chain three and then slip stitch into the next stitch. And then you can start your shell stitch row from there. So you want to begin the shells in the middle of the shell from the previous row. So the middle stitch. Three double crochet all into the same space there. Okay, here's a great question. I don't know that we can pull it necessarily, but I would love to see where where do you guys go to get your yarn? Where's your favorite place to get yarn? I don't care if it's brick and mortar store or online. Is it? Yeah, if you can make a poll out of that. Okay, Mr. Stitches is going to make a poll. Uh, I want to know where you get your yarn. I'm going to sip my tea here. Oreos win on some MMAM strips. Nico, thank you, Nico. Nico's just gifted a membership and Hunter's Haven has won it. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Make sure you check out our community post page for all of the membership posts. Whether you're a member or a subscriber, we've got all sorts of fun things posted over there, including a poll from earlier today that I would love everybody to weigh in on if they have a second. Oh my gosh. Kimberly, thank you for gifting a membership and Martha has won it. Welcome to the family. I'm seeing Hobby Lobbies. I, I, I am really looking forward to the day that I get to visit the United States and visit one of these Hobby Lobbies and a Joann's. I'm, I'm a huge sewer, so I love to I love to buy fabric, too. 
Sales and coupons. See, that's another thing that I like about the U.S. You guys do coupons. You have a lot of coupon options. Here in Canada, our, our retailers are more interested in loyalty points. So you have to have like 100,000 of these plastic cards that you're constantly like tapping so that you can collect loyalty points. I don't really like that system. I think I'd prefer to just, you know, clip coupons and use coupons when I felt like it as opposed to trying to remember what cards I have on me, saving up points, and then remembering to use my points. <laughs> Hobby Lobby, Walmart, oh, Dollar Tree. I bet you the Dollar Tree in the US is better than the Dollar Tree we have here. I noticed some people say that they can get yarn there. That's really cool. Is it good yarn at the Dollar Tree? Like what kind of brands do they carry? Is it like no name stuff or? Hobby. Oh, hobby or hobby. That's an online thing, I think. And you've bought some wine. I've seen a little bit of yarn at Fabricland, Joanna. A little, little bits. Like I, I've, you know, every like the couple that I've been into, they have like, like a one little like shelving unit of it. Oh, there's my end of my yarn. I got to tie in my new yarn ball, and that's going to be this tinselly stuff, all white. So the bag is going to now go from being purple and multicolored to purple and white. So this should look pretty nice. Plus there's a little bit of a tinsel that runs through it. So I'm just gonna knot my yarn with the ends together, nothing fancy, but it's a good solid tight knit knot. So it's not gonna fall apart on me. That's the most important thing. And then I'll just work over top of those little short tails or weave them in later. And maybe I'll just weave them in later. That seems easier. And now I got to get used to a different feeling yarn. Did you get that pull up, Mr. and Stitches? I only do four options. So the third one's going to be other, and they, everyone can just leave a comment. Okay. Sounds good. So Jessica Rabbit says you can find Red Heart yarn at Dollar Trees. Wow. Premier yarn. Wow. Okay, that's cool. Dollar General can have a few as well. Never heard of them. Walmart, there must be a. Mr. Stitches is posting the poll. Hobie is available online. They're based in Denmark. Okay. This white yarn has a little itty bitty kink to it because of the strand of tinsel that runs through it so it 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 twists constantly as i'm using it it does make for kind of a neat looking yarn but i don't like that constant twisting feeling in my fingers <clears throat> i'm glad to be using up this yarn in a bag there we go okay few few shells in so far Hmm. Every once in a while, I just can't get that hook to, there we go. I think you can probably see how wiggly this yarn is if I hold it up compared to the purple yarn. Look at how wiggly that white yarn is. And, and as I smooth it through my fingers, it's like all the wiggle kind of backs up because it's, it's created by that little tinsel that's running through it. So it feels funny. I have to kind of keep pausing and smoothing out the yarn. A store called Woolsey in Manitoba. Oh, okay. Sandy's back to work. Have a great afternoon, Sandy. Thanks for joining us. One, two, three. Crystal likes to find yarn at consignment stores. I love finding packages of yarn at secondhand stores. Those are so fun. You never know what you're going to get. 
I always give it a sniff test, though. I want to make sure that it doesn't stink. Um, I don't want to bring stinky yarn into my house. <laughs> so I, I like to give it a, a little a little sniff test before I take it home because it saves me having to, to do a whole bunch of washing before I, I use it. Never been to a Hobby Lobby, Kristen. Um, they only have those, so far as I know, in the U.S. So uh, have have to travel to the U.S. to to go visit a Hobby Lobby. Oops. Yeah, you wouldn't want it to be moldy either. Agreed, Sakura Sue. Um, I I just find that. You know, uh, it can smell musty, smoky, animal-y, you know, foody. There's like all sorts of different smells that can kind of get into yarn if it's been sitting somewhere for a while. Um, so it, there's nothing to say that you can't buy it and wash it. Uh, I just, you know, I, I kind of give it a sniff to decide how much of a wash it might need. <laughs> I might, might switch out this hook for a different one. I think I will now. Is this roughly the same? No, it's not deep enough. Uh, let's try this seven. Okay. Just going to switch out my hook. This is still a size seven, but it's got a slightly different shaped hook. Um, the uh, It's also deep, but it comes down to a bit more of a point. I don't know if you can see that. Let me pull this up and I'll show you guys. So sideways, you can sort of see how they're both very deep. Um, this has got a real f sort of blunt nose to it. This one's a little more pointed, and I'm trying not to grab the other loops of my yarn, and that wiggly yarn is kind of giving me some trouble. So I'm going to switch out this seven for this seven, because this has got the pointed, the pointed nose, and I think that will help me stay in better control with this wiggly yarn. This is a full aluminum hook, so it's a little heavier than the wooden hook, but that's not that's not too problematic. And uh, I got to get used to this one now, but um, that's a little easier. That's not going to split the yarn. Okay. Sonia says my bag is looking arched at the bottom. Sonia's bag is looking arched at the bottom. Um, so if you've got, if you've just started and you're working on the increase rows and it's looking a little bit um, like it already wants to turn into a bowl or it's a bit wiggly, that's okay. Don't worry about it. Just make sure you've got the right number of stitches as you're working. And um, as you work the rest of the bag pattern, that will disappear. Because if you fold it in half, it's going to want to fold in half naturally anyway. Um, but it's going to stretch out a little bit with with use. So don't worry too much if it's, you know, turning into a bit of a bowl shape on you before you've even gotten out of the increasing part. That's okay. That's that's not a problem. So don't worry about that. So we got 91 votes. Let's go to let's get to at least 100. Yes, a couple more votes and Mr. and Stitches will finish the poll or end the poll and I'll be able to see what everybody's yeah, results are. The poll is at the top of the live chat. You might have to click on the blue bar. And this looks like it's going to be the last shell in row 13. I'm moving a little slower now with this kinky white tinselly yarn. It's so wiggly and it's got it's got this cute kink running through it, but it does make it a little more difficult to, to smooth through my fingers. Joining with a slip stitch to the top of the chain three. And then I'm going to slip stitch into the next stitch to start row 14. There we go. All ready to go. So, so far, so good. Now, I like this. This isn't much of a jump, just going from a variegated yarn that had white in it to another ball of yarn that is all white, but has like that little tinselly silver bit running through it. So it's not a very jarring difference, which I think is gonna look really cool all together because the bottom of the bag will have this little kind of bit of color work in it. And then it'll sort of basically smooth into being all white. Now I have no idea 
um, how much I'll, I might be able to finish the whole bag with this, but we shall see. I don't really know. Sip of tea time. Woo! Yay! Sue, thank you so much for picking up a pattern. I'm going to end the poll now. Mr. and Stitches is ending the poll. Thanks to everybody who voted. Fifty-three percent physical hobby stores, twenty-three percent online yarn stores, and other. Leave a comment in the chat. Amazon eight percent. All right. So most of us like to go shopping in a physical brick and mortar store to get our yarn, and I understand that. I mean, obviously, if you know there aren't any near you, that kind of puts the kibosh on that plan. But I love to get my yarn in person because I like to see it. I like to feel it. Um, Sometimes the color is very different in real in real life than it is sort of when you see it on um, the internet. Even even you know I think a lot of these yarn manufacturers or at least the people who sell it try really hard to make sure that they picture it in the right light. But every once in a while, um, you know you'll I love reading the reviews. Oh, do you guys do that when you go to like you know? wherever you're thinking about buying your yarn online, do you review, read the reviews? Because I absolutely love reading the reviews on products. It's uh, very illuminating and often very amusing. Um, and every once in a while, you know, I'll find a review on a particular color that everybody is weighing in on and saying, yeah, 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 this is this is billed as being kind of a gray blue, but it's, you know, there's absolutely no blue in this yarn whatsoever. You know, like that the color on the that you see on the internet is very misleading, you know? And it's kind of nice to know that because if you're trying to match something or you're planning out a project and you want to just sort of try out a new yarn or you can't get that particular yarn in person, it's really handy to read those reviews and to see what other people think of it. We've purchased yarn from Amazon in the past. Um, we don't do it very often. We don't really, we don't really buy anything online very often. It's a bit of a process, but um, the yarn that we have, I, I, Amazon used to have really nice deals on some yarn, but I, I found lately, like when I've gone to look that they don't have deals at all. The yarn is more expensive usually than the same stuff available locally, um, which I'm guessing they're trying to kind of bury the cost of shipping in the price of the yarn, but um, no deals on Amazon for yarn of late that I have seen. Yeah, Sarah, it's amazing. Um, sometimes some colors just, you know, in real life, they don't look anything like they did on the internet, but that's why I like to read the comments um, and the reviews that people leave. It's, they're really, really handy. Have you purchased yarn from Hobby Lobby to be shipped to you like Amazon would? No, never have. Um, the problem with importing in Canada is that when you buy something, you often have to pay tax, tariff, and sometimes even an import fee, which is uh, because they, they even if somebody ships you something, like, um, let's say, uh, like, my, my grandmother was vacationing in Florida, and she wanted to buy a bunch of yarn at Hobby Lobby and ship it home to me, I might actually have to pay tariffs and importing fees on that gift uh because our government assumes that it's you know not a gift and <laughs> it's it might, it might just show up at the door and be fine yeah or you might get surprised that you have to go pick it up and pay all these extra fines. yeah and it's like what yeah mr and Sitch says it's a bit like a roulette wheel it might just show up at the door just fine or you might get a call from the post office saying you know you have to come down here and it's been opened up and rifled through so i don't like that at all yeah, and then you have to pay for that on top of it. It's really annoying. Catherine, membership milestone. Jada and Mister, thank you for working so hard to bring us so many nice patterns. If anyone wants to learn crochet, I always send them your way. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you for sharing our channel with your friends. I love that. We uh, we we really enjoy doing this. I I I mean, I love crochet so much. Um, I love being able to share it with everybody. And I have to say, these live these live uh, crochet alongs are just 
so much fun. Sometimes they get kind of crazy. Sometimes they're just nice and chill. It's just so nice to have some company while you're sitting there doing a little crochet. So whether you're working on the, the, the basket or the bag or the blanket or whatever we're doing along with me, or you're doing your own thing, it's just, it's just nice to know you guys are there. That happens in Greece too. Yeah, it's really annoying. It's um it's it's such a problem that, you know, in the past I have tried to order or I've gotten the odd gift from, you know, back in the day, family members, they'd be on vacation, they want to send something home, which is really nice. Um and it was always really upsetting. You know, you'd have to go down to the the post office, they would have opened the box. I hate it when other people go through my mail. I'm not okay with that. So, you know, if they don't believe that it says on, you know, hey, there's yarn in this box. And for some reason, they don't believe that they have every right to open it up and make sure that there's nothing, you know, in there that there shouldn't be. And I understand that. And uh, I, I don't begrudge them doing their jobs. But that's why I don't like to buy or import stuff, because I just don't want to think that somebody else has opened up my mail and gone through it. I don't like that, especially if it's a gift that really upsets me. So uh, ugh, I, 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 I just kind of <laughs> look for the available opportunities to do some shopping in, in uh, real life. Cause again, I also, at the end of the day, I just want to, I want to pick up the ball of yarn. I want to feel it. I want to look at it. I want to see if it twinkles in the light, you know, um, that's just so much more fun to me. Is anybody, okay, this is something I learned from my sister-in-law. It's a habit I picked up from her. Does anybody else pick up a ball of yarn, hold it like this, and then immediately smash it into their face? Like squish, 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 squish like this, but like right into their face, like under their nose and into their chin or, or their cheek, maybe? Does anybody else do that? I, I sometimes, it looks so soft. I sometimes do that. I probably shouldn't, but I do. Mr. Stitches is going to get a new poll going. All right. Melissa's had an idea for a poll. Awesome. I think it was Melissa. Yes, I'm not the only one. Okay, good. Yes, face meets yarn. <laughs> I don't know what what is that? What is that that compulsion to to ram the cuddly soft thing into our faces? I bet you you guys probably do that with animals too. Do you guys, you know, <laughs> it's kind of hard not to pick up a kitten or a puppy and just cram it right into your face. I I do that as well. <laughs> I don't even know what you're referring to yet. The poll. The poll. Oh, you don't know what the poll I don't know what the poll is. Well, the poll is. You're teasing me. When is your favorite time to crochet? Oh, when is your favorite time to crochet? That's a very good question. I I like to crochet. I like to crochet with daylight. Uh, before it never used to bother me, but my eyesight's not as great as it used to be. Um, so I like to, to crochet when I have daylight. So that's morning, uh, middle of the day, afternoon and early evening, I guess, in, in the summer weather. Um, if I have really good lighting and I'm super excited about the project, I'll crochet at night, but I'm not a middle of the night crocheter. I am not surprised. I mean, if you love to crochet, you love to crochet. Hello, Nico. Nico. <laughs> I think I missed the Nico. Thank you. Nico has purchased a membership. Thank you. And Oreo, Oreo, a very good cookie, I must say, has won the membership. Thank you guys so much. Yes, if I'm using dark yarn, Joanna, I agree. It's got to be in the daylight. I've got to see what I'm doing. Hey, Anna Victoria, hello. 
I'm just steadily working around. What row am I on? I've lost count. Let's see. This was this was my last row of half double crochet. So that was 11. So 12, 13, 14. I'm on row 15. Okay. Row 15. Very nice. Uh, I feel like switching to this hook was a good idea. That pointed hook has made it a little easier to not split the yarn. This is another another nice excuse for yourselves. If you're trying to if you're trying to justify buying different hooks, you can you can justify it by saying, well, not all hooks are created equal. And sometimes you need a really pointed hook, and sometimes you need a really blunt broad hook, and sometimes you need a really deep hook, and sometimes you need a really shallow hook, and sometimes you want an inline hook, and sometimes you want a you want a, a slightly bent hook, or like there's a whole lot of reasons why you should have different hooks in your in your uh, your toolbox because they don't all act or operate the same way. So um, good excuse if you're looking for a reason to buy new hooks. <laughs> okay, that was row 15, 12, 13, 14, 15. Row 15, this is looking quite nice. I've got two rows of the new color combination in now, which is just that little bit of tinsel. You probably can't even see it um, through the camera. Hold it a little closer to the camera. Yeah, I don't want to. I thought if I held it. Yeah, I, I can see it, but just barely. Just barely. Yeah, a little bit of twinkle. Just a tiny bout. Just these last two rows of shell stitch. Um, but I like it. Sip of tea. I agree, Shell. They are heavy. The 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 metal hooks are heavy, uh, but they can definitely help with these multi-strand projects. But sometimes I don't know. Sometimes I don't mind the extra weight of the hook. I almost feel like I can use I can use it to my advantage. I I almost don't have to work as hard sometimes. Like with that hook, you kind of just let it fall back into your hand. That might have something to do with my grip. I don't know. <laughs> Tanya doesn't want anybody opening her mail either. I don't want anyone opening my mail. I just, you know, it's a thing. Uh, hey, Shan, yes, I do cross stitch. Not that much, but I have cross stitched in the past. I don't have any, oh, wait, I do have a current cross stitch project in the go. I just haven't worked on it in a long time. It's like 17 years old. I should probably finish it. <laughs> it's an epic whip. It's an epic whip, yes. I have hooks that light up. Um, I'm not a big fan of them, but I just agree. Yes, you might need Tunisian hooks. And if you have not got a hook that lights up, you should probably get at least one so you can try it and see if you like them. Milestone. Good point. Crochet with Diane. Membership milestone. Hey, Jada, I'm a little behind in the bag. That's okay. Don't worry about it, Diane. We've got uh, the tutorial will be linked below. So if you want to catch up or or even jump ahead if you really get into it, the uh, tutorial will be available. We'll have that link for you. Um, if it's not already there, we'll make sure it is when the live stream is finished. Um, so you can catch up or move ahead, however you want to do it. Yeah, you don't have to pull as hard with the metal hooks. I agree. <laughs> Wraith had light up hooks that squeaked, so she gave them to her sister. I don't like that. I don't like my hooks squeaking at me. I find that... Um, if I'm using plastic hooks, like a big plastic hook, which is helpful for the big thick yarn, and I'm using that Bernat polyester blanket yarn, it's squeak, squeak, squeak. The whole thing squeaks, which <laughs> can be a little annoying. Ooh, we should take a few questions about the project and wrap it up for today. Okay. Mr. and Stitches says, let's grab a couple of questions about the project or crocheting market bags in general. Uh, and then we will wrap it up for the day and we will reconvene tomorrow at roughly the same time to continue the bag the bag project here. I'm gonna end the poll. Yep. Mr. And Stitches is gonna end the poll. When is your favorite time to crochet? Evening wins with 40%, the morning or midday, 29%, mid-afternoon, 22%, early morning, 7%. Very nice. I think a lot of us kind of got into the habit of crocheting in the evenings because that's likely when we had we had time. Um, 
I I liked to crochet. I when I was when I was at the office every single day, um, I always had my crochet with me, and I did a lot of my crocheting at lunch hour. I also did a lot of teaching at lunch hour too. <laughs> I'm okay using black yarn. I see people sort of discussing black yarn in the chat there. I'm okay using black yarn, especially if it's like really well lit and it's a nice thick yarn. Um, but I can't, as soon as the sun goes down, I can have every light on in the house and it's not enough for, for black yarn. But I love black anything. Um, I, I would rather crochet most of my wearables in black, but um, I don't typically when we're shooting tutorials because nobody would be able to see what I was doing. <laughs> Tammy asks, do you still have cups in the shop? I wonder if she means the, the uh, Teespring shop. Maybe, hang on. Welcome to Alpaca, Regina. Hey, new member. Um, Our spring shop may still have coffee yeah, mugs it does yes okay yeah it should still have the coffee mugs in the spring shop I will post it in the chat. mr stitches will post a link to the spring shop in the chat What kind of light up cooks do you use, Claudia? I'm just curious. You mentioned that they're you find them useful for working with the dark yarn or the black yarn. I've tried, but I don't I don't like it. I can't keep staring at the light. It's too bright. Doris, welcome to Alpaca. And I have a neck lamp. Absolutely adore it. Um, and it's fine after dark if I'm using lighter colors to crochet, but I need sunlight to crochet with dark yarn, uh, with the black yarn in particular. And Kristen's acting, asking about, do you crochet tote bags with acrylic yarn? So we answer this question a lot. The reason I use cotton is because it's very strong and it washes well. Um, acrylic yarn, while cheap and plentiful and great to crochet with, doesn't make strong tote bags. Tote bags typically tote a lot of weight around, especially like books and food, stuff like that. Um, and it will stretch. So acrylic will stretch where cotton will not stretch as quickly or as readily. You can machine wash acrylic, but it doesn't hold up well in the washing process as well as cotton does. Acrylic tends to pill faster than cotton does. Um, and you can use acrylic to make your bags, but if you do, I recommend you line your acrylic crochet bags because then the weight of whatever you're carrying ends up being kind of contained by the lining and it doesn't stretch out your crochet. So, uh, new, channel member. new channel member, Tina, Tina Marie, welcome to Alpaca. Welcome, welcome. I am working myself around here. Is the stacked shell pattern stronger than the staggered shell for tote bags? Great question, Barbara. Um, I'm going to say marginally stronger, um, but more in the case where you're not going to have your spaces open up as much as they would if you were using the staggered shell stitch. Um, the staggered shell stitch, you've got weight happening on uh, all over the crochet pattern. And that weight of the crochet will be in the holes, which will pull the holes open a little bit more. But because we're putting the stacked shell, uh, shell in the top of the stitch from the previous shell, and that weight load is going to be sort of carried across the stacked double crochets and not spaces, it's not going to pull the spaces open. So your pattern stitch will not open up as quickly as it would if you were using the staggered shell stitch pattern. Great question. And I am really taking it easy here, trying not to strain my fingers. Uh, it's nice to just crochet at, at a gentle pace too. I, I, I do tend to crochet super quick when I'm doing other things, but 
doing these multi-strand projects reminds me to slow down. And that's a little message I need sometimes. <laughs> I am going to finish this row and then I think we're going to call it there for today. I'm just a couple shells away here from finishing the row. We will pick up tomorrow at roughly the same time. So if you've uh, got the time and the inclination to hang out with us, then please do. Did you get all the questions? I think I got all the questions. Did I miss anybody's questions? If I did, then um, you can always leave them in the comment section or quickly repeat them now because I do have a, a couple seconds to just take a look at them. Oh, Marie's on market bag number two. Wonderful. Melissa, thank you for gifting a membership. And Cherry B <laughs> has sent a super chat. Good afternoon, Ms. J and General G. Good afternoon, Cherry. Thank you so much. Now, who has won the Natasha? Natasha has won the family membership. Congratulations. Do you cut up clothing to make yarn? We have a video on. We do. Oh, Mr. Stitches says, do you cut up clothing to make yarn? That's a good question. We have a video on how to make t-shirt yarn. Uh, we'll link that one down below as well yeah. um, afterwards. That's a fun way to make yarn because absolutely you can do that. It makes really good yarn too. We found our neck lamp on Amazon. Yes, we found the neck lamp on Amazon. We have a tutorial, actually a little vlog about that. Um, I think I can link that one as well. And uh, yes. We've been using cotton yarn and it's size four weight, Teresa. Cotton yarn size four medium weight. And um, Robin asks, can you make the shell bag with a smaller hook, something like four millimeter and one strand of yarn? Yes, it will just size down considerably, but absolutely that works too. And Krista asks, what's a membership? Channel membership is a way to help support our channel um, by joining your sort of contributing a few dollars a month to the channel, which helps us out a lot. And in return, we have some fun little perks available. You can always click on the membership or the join button to check the whole system out and see if it's something you're interested in. And we appreciate it very, very much. I am joining the row with the slip stitch at the top of the chain at three. And that is it for me for today. I hope I got everybody's questions. Doodly doodly doo. Great, looks like I did. Okay, everybody, have a wonderful rest of your day. We will see you tomorrow, Wednesday, and we will continue where we left off. And for me, that is 12, 15, 14, 15, 16. I finished row 16. I've got row 17 through row 20 to do with the inline shell stitch, and then a couple of rows of half double crochet to finish it off. And then we're gonna work on the straps. And I have a slight strap tweak in mind. We'll see how that goes when we get there. All right. Have a wonderful day. We will see you guys tomorrow. Mr. and Stitches, do you have anything to add? Uh, no. Just no? Bye-bye for now. Okay. We'll be back tomorrow. Bye-bye for now. TTFN and all that. And we will see you guys tomorrow. Have a great day.